currently working our way through the Transformers series, aren't we, Mason? The Michael Bay films. Why? MCA. <laughs> Thank you. It's broken our brains watching these Transformers <laughs> movies. There's so That's many right. Transformers. There's too many. Who's who and what's what? I don't know. What we thought we'd do here is run through some of the weirder ones from over the years. If you could leave a like because of that YMCA comment, that'd be great. We didn't plan that. That's just comedy off the top of the dome. If you're any one of the village people, um, that was for you. Yeah. So I think a good one to start with are the Pretenders. Oh, sure, yeah. Because we get one of them in Transformers 2. Mm. Shia LaBeouf is seduced, sort of. <laughs> by by Stray's own Isabel Lucas. That's right, but she's really a spindly, horrible Transformer monster. Mm-hmm. So some Transformers, it turns out, can look like humans. But my understanding is that the original version of these characters... Oh, they're wildly different. They're so, not like this at all. So the, the, the ones that I remember from the comic books, so what happened is a group of Decepticons, they developed like this biomechanical like armoured shell that they could wear that, you know, gave them, you know, enhanced powers and durability but also made them look like horrible monsters. Yeah. And then the Autobots also developed the technology so they made like armoured shells that made them look like humans. But, I mean, humans that you could conceivably fit a full car inside. <laughs> yeah. And, look, I understand in story they would have yeah. built it mostly for protection and power or whatever and, you know, the, the, the Autobots made theirs look like humans so they could relate to other humans. Sure. But given that they're called the Pretenders... Who's this fooling? Do you think the the people of Earth are out there? They're looking over there and they're like, "Well, I mean, don't, don't worry about that guy. I mean, he's not a he's not a giant robot. He's just a he's just a wolf man in power armor. So that's <laughs> that's fine. Don't worry about it." And do you think the Decepticons are looking over in this direction? And they're like, is that a regular size human that's really close to me? I'm not even going to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I think also the version they did in the movie, I don't really think there's an actual connection. I think it's just pure coincidence. They're like, we just one looks like a, a girl. Yeah, exactly. The, yeah. the villains have whatever powers they need. Yeah. You know. Also notice that there's one of them called Double Header, who's a uh, transformer who looks like a man but has literally two heads. So if we're talking in disguise, <laughs> it's not the best one, is it? Here's one that I had when I was a kid, and I actually liked it, even though they got a lot of flack. Okay, I'm ready. And they also are pointed at directly for being the death of the Transformers line of toys first the time around. The Transformers Action Masters. Correct. Well, they were, they were the same size uh, as the uh, G.I. Joe figures of the time. Yes, that's right. But here's the twist. They didn't transform. No, but there was a story reason for it, because they were locked into this form because <laughs> it meant they were more powerful, Mason. Mm. It didn't just mean they were getting lazy. And they, <laughs> but they all, they all came with a little sidekick, I think, that yes. did transform into a gun. It looks like a bird that turned yeah, into a gun a or whatever. And, whatever yeah. and some would say that that's because it was cheaper. But I would say the power thing that you mentioned earlier <laughs> yeah, makes definitely. a lot of sense, yeah. right? Yeah, because for Transformers, they're always about story first. They don't do designs and then figure everything out after. No, no, no. That's not in the spirit of Transformers, even though it always has been. Anyway, I'm not against it because I had one. I had the yellow one. It was cool. I liked it. Yeah, I nice. still got it somewhere. What do you got next? Uh, look, uh, if we're talking skills and power. Also, Action Masters didn't kill the Transformers toys in 1994. They were on the way out. Let's not kid oh, ourselves. Oh, yeah, for sure. This is the last ditch attempt. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Anyway, sorry, go on. Uh, look, uh, if, we're talking, if we're talking skills, we're talking power, we're talking versatility. I remember there was a Transformer called Broadside. Of a barn? No, James. He wouldn't turn to a barn. That's ridiculous. No, just the side. Oh, yeah, then yes. Yeah. But also, what was great about Broadside is he was an Autobot, but... He had the rare Autobot ability that he could turn into an aircraft, which was quite, you know, rare. rare. Speaking of barns, rare as hen's teeth. Sure. Uh, you, got some, you got some aerial bots who can do it, you know uh-huh. what I mean? But it was mostly a Decepticon thing. Exactly. So he could fight him in the skies. The mm. only disadvantage he had is that he was afraid of heights. <laughs> but fortunately, he was also a very rare triple changer. So you could also transform into a boat. But on the other side, he was afraid of water. <laughs> so really just really... Even though he had jet propulsion, which really, means... Really could... just wasting people's time, this guy. <laughs> I feel like they, uh, they've they improved some Transformers for me who had initially bad design choices, like Megatron turned into a little gun. And I know yes. it's like, well, it's powerful. It's because it's a, it's a power move. No, it's not. They fucked it up and they based it <laughs> off the toy. Let's not Let's not get into it. But Perceptor is now a sniper, but just started off as a microscope. That's correct. And it's like, yeah. don't you all have microscopic vision automatically? Isn't that a thing that you have? Some of them specialize in computing. And it's like, well, aren't you, aren't you all, all computers? computers? What's going on here? <laughs> anyway, it's fine. Tell us about the Rock Lords. Technically well, not Transformers. They're not Transformers. Or they sort of are. No. They're transforming. Vi- they're transforming 
uh, uh, characters. They're transforming robots, so I'll give them that. But they're spin-offs of the GoBots, and the yes. GoBots are now owned by the same parent company. Oh, so you, technically, you, they're you now got me on connected. a technicality. All right, and you know what? There's a lot of love for the GoBots still out there. Yeah, I mean, totally. They, they were they were cheaper and 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 not as interesting. But you know what? Let let's go for it. The Rock Lords were robots that transformed into rocks, but they had different names: Nugget, <laughs> Granite, Crackpot. Pulver Eyes. Oh. These are all classic characters I didn't just look up before this video. Oh, wow. Yeah. And they had that incredible battle strategy, which is really, really, really hope that the bad guys were at the bottom of a big hill <laughs> and you were at the top of a big hill because otherwise what are you going to do? And also, <laughs> I only get one do? shot at this. What, what would they do? Would they, would they fall down a hill and then transform back into robots and then run back up the hill, Kate Bush style? Yeah, I, I guess so, yeah. I guess that was the idea. I, it was more of a durability and power thing from my understanding. Yeah, Is right, sure. I guess so, yeah. Who even knows? Uh-huh. And look, James, I know they're fan favourites, mm. uh, but the Dinobots. <gasps> Grimlock, Sludge, yeah. Slag. Craig, <laughs> Brett. All the greats. Denver. Here's the thing. In the, co- in the comic books, their origin was yes. uh, they were awoken on Earth millions of years before the rest of the Transformers. Sure. And, so, and because their ship wanted to make their alternate forms like the life, life forms existed, that were on sure. the planet at the time. They were turned into dinosaurs, right? Perfect. Makes Nailed sense. It. In the cartoon, Wheeljack just built them. <laughs> He's just like, we should probably have some Transformers that are dinosaurs and we should make them like dinosaurs, i.e. dumb. <laughs> like like dumb as a box of rocks, all of them. Me Grimlock fool. And then maybe the rest of the Transformers were like, well, since they're like artificially intelligent beings and we can like program ourselves and maybe we could make them smarter but he's like nope dumb asses. dumb they should be dumb and they should be just big and strong and dumb yeah and just fall over all the time and just get in the way and just smash things they're kind of they're all the hulk they're all they're all the hulk but exactly yeah, yeah yeah there is an episode of the original series though where grimlock gets smart visiting the head of unicron oh yes and he creates the technobots oh that's right and he like filters his mind into them it's like a real Letters for Algernon ending where he's like, <laughs> Grimlock dumb again. And they're all like, ha, 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 ha. We're like, that's sad. It is sad. Because he, he yeah, got yeah. a taste of intelligence yeah, and then yeah, yeah, he yeah. sacrificed himself. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then again, we did get, you know, the Technobots <laughs> and 24 volumes of Ministry of Sand. Am I right, James? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get copyright struck for you doing that sound. The Transformers will return after these messages. Let me tell you something, some headphones are no good, just absolute crap. But Raycon wireless earbuds are both stylish and discreet, with no dangling wires or stems, making them great for video chats. Co-founded by Ray J and used by the likes of Snoop Dogg, the carrying case can charge earbuds four times in a single charge and come in a range of fun colours. Also, if you can believe this, they are half the price of other premium wireless earbuds on the market while sounding just as amazing as the top audio brands. Plus, they're great for working from home, working out, listening to music and podcasts for hours without driving those around you crazy. Their everyday E25 earbuds, they're the best model yet with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice, noise-isolating fit. Also, you should check out all the new fun colors. So if you're interested... Click the link in the description to get 15% off your order or visit buyraycon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. I'm at the video. We now return to the Transformers. There's been weird and wacky uh, Transformers, just toys over the years. There was an Optimus Prime that turned into a Nike shoe. (laughs) Yeah, I remember that that one. Okay, yeah. Uh, Star Wars, of course, released its own brand. There was Darth Vader, turned Turned into into a TIE fighter. Oh, yep. An AT-AT driver that turns into an AT-AT. Obi-Wan Kenobi turns into Jedi Starfighter Delta 7 plus hyperdrive docking ring. All classic characters. (laughs) That's more of a fun kind of, you know, merging of worlds. I'm okay with it. You know what Transformers always looked cool to me, Mm. but in retrospect, all mostly awful. The second wave of Transformers from Transformers the movie from the 80s. Yeah. Because I remember at the time Transformers the movie debuted this new set of toys, I mean characters. Yes. uh, And they all had like coordinating colour schemes and they all had these futuristic looks. But oh my God, they were so annoying. Blur. Yeah. Just, he's just, really? Blur's just a, just a Transformer with ADHD. Yeah. And he's just, he's supposed to be fast, 
But that never really translates into like anything tactical. He just tactical. talks fast. He just talks fast. Yeah. You want to be like, a bit of shush, mate. <laughs> Willie look, always talked in rhyme. Yeah. And a horrible little toy as well. Yes, exactly. Had that one. And also the gall to replace Optimus Prime with Rodimus Prime. <laughs> well, and I was going to say Hot Rod. Yeah. Great looking Transformer. Great looking robot mode. Rodimus Prime. Boo. He's turning into like a like a mobile home with flames on the side. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What is that? I don't know. What is that? I, I know they eventually bring back Optimus Prime and Rodimus Prime has become like his own character in his mm. own right. That's interesting enough. There are some ones that I like from that new series. I think. You love Cup. I love the, the boomer of the, of the Transformers. Right. Yeah. You were telling me earlier he's probably not a fan of PC culture. And I'm like, <laughs> so that's, that's a good joke. He would often talk about that's how That's a good joke. Gone. And here's the thing about Transformers toys, because I've got a bit of a bone to pick, because there oh, is yes. some cheapness in relation to some of them. The toy of Ultra Magnus just has a prepackaged, unpainted Optimus Prime just stuck in the middle of it. That's because he's Optimus Prime's brother in some continuities, but not the continuity <laughs> specifically you're thinking of, okay. in which case it is a cost-cutting measure. Yes. He wasn't unpainted. He was painted white. Don't get me wrong. I do love that design. Mm. And I think, quite frankly, he should have been the leader. I think he was more <laughs> worthy. And maybe if he had faster hands, he would have caught that matrix of leadership. I know they say that it technically wasn't supposed to go to him. It wasn't his destiny. You think it's a but case he should of have f- grabbed it. You th- you're saying that the matrix of leadership just goes to whoever grabbed it first. <laughs> yes. Yeah, maybe. Look, the thing is, Transformers weren't just a random collection of toys that they mushed together and then built a TV show out of in retrospect. We've established that already, haven't we? Uh, okay. <laughs> What's the toys that made us? They'd go, they'd go through the history of all of that. But one that you bring up quite regularly in my presence, and it still gets my goat, Mason. Oh, here we go. Is the idea behind Fortress Maximus. This character was 22 inches tall. This was in the 80s. Yeah. It cost 100 US dollars. Yeah. The absolute stones on these guys yes. to put out a toy that big and think that any kid who's not a spoiled, horrible prick yeah. to get a toy like that. Don't uh-huh. bait us with something like that. Now, not Richie Rich. Now, if you if you don't if you don't remember specifically Fortress Maximus, he could turn into like an op, uh, an Autobot base, mm. but also he could uh, remove his own head, mm-hmm. which transformed into its own transformer, and then you could remove that transformer's head that turned into another transformer. So that's like a babushka doll. Like a babushka doll with like laser guns and stuff. It cost a hundred dollars in the eighties. Hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One so time look- I was on holiday with my parents. Mm. And I saw one of those for sale and I'm like, I've been good. Can I, would you, would you buy this for me? And they're like, you know how much weight that's going to add to our suitcase? And, <laughs> yeah. and fair enough. Yeah, that's, that's weight as much as I did. But so. they did consider it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, right. You were nearly that kid. Now I could buy my, one of my very own. What's well, funny you should mention that, Mason, because I looked online, like what's one of these going to cost? You get low end. It's got some of the paint chipped off. You got, you know, none of the original box art or anything like that. It's 750 US dollars. You get something brand new. It's costing you upwards of $2,000 US. Yes, I'm not buying one after all. <laughs> so my gripe still exists to this very day. Wow. But if you go to bigsandwich.co, which is our subscription service, <laughs> chip in and I will buy Fortress Maximus for myself. Oh, that's what you're doing. No, huh? not really. <laughs> I couldn't justify it. I thought what you were going to do there is say that uh, bigsandwich.co is only $9 per month, which is significantly less than $2,000 for a Fortress Maximus. That's what I, yes, that's what I said. And maybe we'll draw a little <laughs> sketch of a Fortress Maximus. Maybe that's what we'll do for you. Put it up on there, yeah. yeah. But if you do want to sign up for that, that would be great because we have every video that we can goes up there early, including Caravan of Garbage. Like I said, we're doing the Transformers series at the moment. We have some subscriber-only podcasts That's where right. we talk about clickbait and comic books. That's exactly the internet's it. two favourite things. It's come together. That's and right. Of course, we also do have a podcast that you can check out anytime you want called The Weekly Planet that comes out every Monday morning. We talk movies and comics and TV shows. Swing on by if you just want to see two men too old to be talking about things like in this video just going insane. Over a series of weeks and months, sometimes years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, guys, uh, catch you next time. I grabbed that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Subscribe, yeah, I guess, if you want. 